What's up everyone, it's me the installer. I have a video for you for the Super Bowl. We're gonna pick the best Super Bowl TVs or you know, sporting events or best TVs for sports in general and for early 2024 because none of the new TVs that come out. So we're kind of deciding which of the TVs from last year are best suited for your home right now. And I have some questions that I'm gonna kind of answer as we go through this because a lot of people were asking me, should I go size versus quality or if I have a dark or bright room? And a lot of this can be answered with our quiz online. So you can take that as well, but let's go through this list. So I'm gonna add each of these TVs to this tier list and kind of give you an overview, but I am gonna also use the Best Buy site because it helps me visualize what I think and to see the price points of all these different TVs. And the first one we're gonna start out with is this TV that has not been out for very long. It's kind of a sneaky one that got in here toward the end of the year, which is the Samsung S89C. QD OLED, at least that's what I think it is. Some people thought it was a regular OLED. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The point is it is an OLED TV at a 77 inch size that is only $1,799, which is really good for this size and quality of TV. Now, of course, not everyone's gonna be buying an $1,800 TV, that's okay, but there's some other options. We got smaller TVs and larger TVs, but one of the things that I was concerned about with this is that the upscaling or just watching low bit content when I was watching some of these Samsung QD OLEDs wasn't as good as something like the LGs. But then someone commented that you could just get like a 4K box to connect and then that would actually upscale for you and you wouldn't have to worry about those sort of issues. So. That is a really good point. So if you already have like an Apple TV 4K, you wouldn't have to worry about the one issue that I had with this TV, which was that upscaling or just how it handles the low bitrate content. But I really think that this is a great deal. And I would say that this is clearly at least up here in the middle of the B, if not A, tier because of the quality and price. And I am gonna try to differentiate in this video quality and price or deal or, or how good of a deal it is. So we'll, we'll kind of move things around at the end and I'll answer the rest of those questions at the end. So stick around. There's some cool things I'm gonna do at the end here to really help you guys differentiate which TV to get. But let's just start off with that S89C on this A list because you know the S90C, which is on our list here too, is also up on this. This is just a little bit more expensive, but it is not much different than the S89C. From what I gather, the only difference is the stand that it comes with. We actually put the stand on upside down for the S90C see so it can look a little cooler than in this picture right here but the s89c just has feet i don't think that's a big deal i think overall it has 4k 120 really good gaming specs it's qd oled super bright so both of these tvs are on this a tier and i think they're really good deals now this s90c is still 24.99 for a 77 inch where the s89c is 17.99 so that's a huge savings if you're going to go with this S89C. So I'd recommend that unless anyone else in the comments can tell me why they get the S90C, right? But if you're not a Samsung person and you're like, I gotta get an LG, then they have the LG B3 77 inch at $18.99, so that's just 100 bucks more. They're both really good gaming TVs. This does not have four HDMI 2.1 ports. This only has two, and this one below it here, this LG C3 is really like the main kind of mainstream version of what most people would get for LG 77 inch. So that's $22.99 versus the $17.99 of the Samsung. So that's a $500 difference. So for that price point difference, if you have a, you know, basically same quality TV, maybe even the Samsung's better, you could actually get yourself a soundbar system or something. So that's something to think about. But both of these are really good. I think that this LG C3 is also on that same tier. So I would find it right here. I had the 83 inch, of course. So I'm gonna put that up on the A. It might get a little bit crowded up here on the A tier. I might have to move things up or down. We will see in a minute. But my point starting with these QD OLEDs, regular OLEDs is that these are just really nice displays, period. Whether you're watching movies or sports. And they're probably a little bit overpriced for most people, but it's kind of where I thought would be a great opportunity for people to put in their living rooms. If that's what you're doing, I mean, they have 65 and 77 inch versions of all these. And we're going to get into the larger sizes again, because as you do so, things get a little complicated. I'm going to compare some of these OLEDs at 83 inch versus like 98 inch TV. So we'll do that just here in a second. And as far as the B3 goes, which is the one I was talking about a minute ago, I would probably put that one tier down because it is still really awesome, but it is not as bright. It has those two HDMI ports that are for gaming. And I think it's better in a darker room and we can rearrange these for dark versus bright room. But I think that these three are clearly above 
the B3, which is still really, really nice. And again, it's $18.99 for a 77 inch. And I think uh, that's fair. Now I wanna take a moment and go through a few of the TVs that are more mid tier because you know we got a lot of those here. Now we did do a video where it was TCL, Hisense, or neither. And it got a lot of views because I think people really are trying to figure out where like TCL and Hisense rank on these kind of structures. Like where would you put these? And we had a few of them in the house. Uh, we did have the TCL Q7. I was pretty happy with it. It was fairly bright, it was great for sports, and it was actually okay for watching movies. The only downside is the quality control. Seemed like it dipped a little from some of the other Hisense or TCL TVs. There was a little bit of yellow around the edge of the screen, a little bit of vignetting. So the panel wasn't perfectly clean, but overall I thought it was a pretty good TV. I would put that in this C tier and also it's a really good price point. So 65 inch, 699. That's a lot less than some of the other QLEDs that you're gonna be looking at. Uh, if you're going for a Samsung or if you're going for a Sony LED at this size, you're not gonna get this price point for this quality, but I still don't think it's top, top quality. They did have some other ones here. We have the QM8, which is even a little bit better. And that one at 65 is 899. So definitely price point is up, but this is mini LED and I like this TV better, especially the smaller sizes. We can talk about the 98 inch in a second, but I thought that the QM8 was a good quality versus price point. So I would actually rank that up here on the B tier. Obviously their mini LED version that's a little bit more expensive and a little better is gonna be higher than their Q7. But I still think that that is on par with the B3 because it's much brighter. It's gonna do better in a bright room. And for sports, definitely brighter than the LG B3. Now, if you're watching a movie or if you're in a dark room or if you're gaming, you might prefer that OLED TV for a bunch of reasons, whether it be the contrast or just a clean picture. I like that for a lot of reasons, but this is how I'd rank that QM8. I think it's still under these OLED TVs of course. And I think maybe one or two of these OLEDs might jump up to the S tier in a second, but uh, let's keep moving. Then we have a couple more TCLs that are probably more entry level. We have the Q6, which I'm just gonna go ahead and stick right here on the D tier. And then we have the S4, uh, and that is not QLED. That's the difference between the two, but the similarities are that they're both 60 Hertz panels, which is still fine for watching sports. I mean, you could argue that you may ha lose a little bit of motion control if you wanted to you know, mess around with that. But I think these are really good uh, because the price point is there, but the quality is not going to be quite as good as the Q7 or the QM8. But I think it's fair to say that they're still uh, great values for uh, what you're you know, going to pay for these. And I do have to move this S5 here, which I'm going to put in there, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. But that's kind of where I would stick these TCL TVs. On the other hand, we do have the Hisense as well. And I did look before I started this video and the U7K or just the U7 is what it looks like on Best Buy here has become a really good opportunity. I actually recommend the U7 to family members just because this was two years ago. It wasn't even mini LED yet, but now it is a mini LED. It is 120 Hertz panel. This 55 inch TV is only 479. That is a very difficult price point to beat for this quality of a TV. So I really think that that is something that people should consider. And if you go to the 65 inch, you're at 679. And this is still $20 less than this Q7 from TCL, which is not mini LED technically. Um, so they're both very similar price. And I would say I hadn't reviewed this one, but I reviewed it last year, the version with the H at the end. I thought it was great. The only difference was is the price of the TCL was a little less. This year it's not. The high sense is actually a little bit better of a deal. So then I wonder where do we put it on this tier structure? So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here on the same as the TCL Q7. I'd probably switch these around though. And I'd say just barely that high sense is a better deal. And if you're looking for a 55 or a 65 inch, I would definitely look at this. And then if you're going for a 75 inch or you know 65 inch and down, I also think that the U8K is really awesome. It's a great TV. I actually love this one. Uh, I had the 75 inch version, which I thought looked so good from different angles and just a really good opportunity for only $12.99. And again, you know, that's 1300 bucks. It's still a lot of money, but at a 75 inch size with the ability for this to handle reflections and it's very bright, it has good motion and everything with Google TV. I think this is a great TV for watching the Super Bowl on or any sporting events. And it's great for movies, gaming, everything. It's a great all around TV. And I think it's definitely gotta be up there on the tier list. So let's go back and check this out. And I would actually put 
this U8K here, probably in front of both of these, or maybe just in front of the QM8 and not the B3. I'm not sure what I would do here. This is probably a, a dark room versus a bright room situation. So if I was in a dark room, control light all the time, I'd probably take the LG B3. But for most living rooms with some light, or you're gonna have the lights on in the house, you can be watching TV after dinner or on the couch, the Hisense U8K is probably a really good choice, specifically the 75 inch, and it's $600 less than the 77 inch B3, and a lot less than any of the ones above it up here. And they do have a 100 inch version of this that's listed at $29.99, 3,000 bucks. But currently it says it's unavailable in my area. Uh, this has been the issue is that it's kind of been in and out of stock. So it's been very difficult to review and or to find. But people that have found this say that it's in line with the other sizes. And I've had a few different people say that they absolutely love it. So if you're able to find this Hisense 100 inch U8, go ahead and get it. But you know, there also is another TV that has come out from Hisense, which was completely unannounced to me at least. And that is this 100 inch U7 six. We actually just did a video doing some Best Buy, you know, end of the year deals. This was not even on this. We found this TV like the next day after we recorded that and it was like, wow. And so I definitely missed the opportunity to talk about it, but I haven't reviewed it anyway. So I don't know what I can tell you guys. It is not mini LED, but it is the full array local dimming or FALD, which is something that the TCL S5 that I really love doesn't have. It does not have dimming zones. So that could be good for this to have improved contrast over that TCL. However, I don't know how well this handles those dimming zones and so sometimes it can you know suppress highlights in a TV and if the dimming algorithm is not well controlled by the processor it may not be better than that s5 that I really liked with very nice uh, specular highlights for an LED TV so I don't have a whole lot of information on whether or not I'd recommend this to everyone but I can confidently say that that 100 inch has to be at least on this C tier or maybe even on this B tier, knowing the quality that Hisense provides, how I think this TV will handle. I mean, it is very similar to the U7K right here, I would imagine. And it's not mini LED, but it still has that local dimming and that price point of only 2000 bucks. Hmm. So when I say, you know, deals, maybe we put this all the way up into the A's, but as far as just my general assumption of what I think this TV is gonna do, it's at least here on the C tier and for 2000 bucks for a 100 inch TV, definitely think I'd recommend it. And you know, it's a thousand dollars less than that you 8K that you can't find. And I say that seeing here on my you know, area that it is available for delivery and installation. And the installation is free. I'm not sure if that's because I'm already like a Best Buy member. Maybe that's the case or maybe everyone gets free installation. It does say free installation right there. Uh, and I'll tell you, 100 inch TVs are not very easy to install. So I would just buy a super big flat wall mount or a tilt wall mount that does not turn left and right because if you turn it left and right you know it's going to stick off the wall a foot but if you get them to come and install that for you included that would be awesome because this thing is heavy and it's not fun to install by yourself i mean i'm an installer so it's not too bad for me jen and whoever else helps us but yeah when i click on just delivery unavailable pickup unavailable However, when I put delivery and installation available, so check this out in your area or if you can buy it on Amazon. We'll have all the links for all these for you know Best Buy, Amazon, wherever else you can purchase them down in the description. We do earn commission off those links at no cost to you, so we appreciate the support for the channel. And so those are all the Hisense and TCLs, and I definitely recommend you know considering those TVs. I made a whole video about it. Go check that out if you want to. Uh, I do have one more here I'm gonna save toward the end, this TCL 98 inch, and I'll tell you why in just a second. But we have some other TVs up here and I did review some of the Sony and Samsung and even LG LED type TVs. And I love some of them, I don't love some of them, but one of the ones that's very popular every year is the X90 or 900 series because it's a really good combination of quality and price point. It gives you most of what you need and it's normally one of the better deals for Sony at least. And as you can see here, a 65 inch X90L is basically $1,100. And if you compare it to that Hisense U8K I was talking about, it's about $200 more. But I would imagine that there are some people out there that just like Sony better and would say, I will pay that extra 200 bucks in order to get that Sony. And to be fair, even though it is not a mini LED TV, it still has a lot of great benefits, including the ability for it to tone map better than some of the other TVs, basically processing power. So upscaling, tone mapping, better color, more accurate, 
there are some things that Sony are really good at and it's worth to pay that little Sony tax in most people's minds. Uh, obviously, someone like me, I'd still see the value in getting a couple hundred dollars off and maybe grabbing a sound bar, but still, the Sony is not bad at all. And if you can control the light in your room, the fact that it's maybe not quite as bright or that the anti-reflective coating on this TV is not the same as the flagship X95L or X93L mini LED from Sony, it doesn't really matter because you won't need that anti-reflective capability. So really not a whole lot of downside. And so for me, it's pretty clear that I would move this X90L here up onto this B tier. And I probably would again move this somewhere over here maybe on the other side of the Hisense and TCL, it's very difficult. All three of these TVs are very similar in their quality and price points. The Hisense and the TCL are a little bit less expensive. However, the Sony might be a little bit better, but I would say I still probably like the Hisense U8K the best out of these three. And I'm still in that same boat where it's dark room B3, bright room Hisense. Uh, wouldn't be mad at anyone for getting either one of these other TVs. Now, to move this along a little faster, I did have three Samsungs or two in the house and then one I have had in previous years, and I'm pretty familiar with it, but this is the Samsung QN95C. And I would almost say this, this deserves to be up on this A tier because it's probably the best mini LED TV of the year. Just really, you know, solid overall. Had really no complaints about it. Now, the QN90C, is still pretty good, however, it's not quite as good, and they changed the pan a little bit, so I would put this down on this B tier. Again, I might actually move it around here. I, I, I think, you know, it's probably right up there with the Hisense, I'd probably put it here, probably ahead of the X90L, and this uh, 85 inch is actually 2,300 bucks, whereas this 85 inch for the X90L is only 2,000, so it's a $300 difference, but still, I think it's probably worth it. it's a little bit better. And then we also have the QN85C, which can be purchased Best Buy or also Costco. I believe they have this. And I actually like this TV. Every year I get the QN85 and it's almost identical to the QN90. So I also think that this is a great deal and this is probably a little bit better priced yet. So QN95, which is a little bit less of mainstream, harder to find, something like Value Electronics, I believe has it. So if you wanna call Robert over at Value Electronics, tell him be the installer sent you or the QN90C, QN85C from Best Buy, Costco, Amazon, those sorts of places. All three of these TVs are really good, good anti-reflective capabilities, good brightness, great gaming specs, great for the big game. I think you really can't go wrong with any of these three. So then it comes down to price point, size, all that makes it kind of difficult to sit there and talk about these for the next 10 minutes. So I'm just going to keep moving because we still have a bunch below. Now for the QNEDs from LG, I do think that the QNED 85 was pretty good. I think that that could be on this C tier or even up on this B tier, but man, it's getting really tight up there. Uh, the QNED 80, um, I would put that down here, C or even D tier. It was not my favorite TV. It just had a little bit of light bleeding, just a little issues here or there. Overall, it's still okay, but I think when it really comes down to deals, then it becomes an issue because I definitely couldn't recommend it in front of any of the three here. So, you know, I definitely would recommend it over the Q6 or S4, but it's, you know, close to being down in this D tier as well. And then lastly, the last LED TV that I want to do right here is the X93L or even the X95L. They're very similar. There are probably some technical differences. And I know that the X95L was only available in the 85 inch size. It's not available at Best Buy. Again, this is something I've sent people to Value Electronics. Robert will ship it to you anywhere in the US. So go ahead and check that out. But the X93L even I had said is probably one of the best LED TVs I've ever seen. It is mini LED. It would be very difficult for me to pick between this one and this QN95C from Samsung. This, so this is probably a battle of, do I like Sony better or Samsung better? Do I like the Google operating system of Sony better or the Tizen? This X93L was really awesome. So I'm pretty comfortable with that being up on this A tier. And I think if you get it in various sizes, the only issue is rather expensive. So if you're going 85 inch, this is gonna be nearly twice as expensive as the X90L. And for me to say, is it definitely worth 2X that price? Probably not. Um, but you know, if people are looking into buying the best Sony mini LED, then this is what you're gonna get. And we did an installation of the X95L, 85 inch, and I thought it looked beautiful in the gentleman's home, and they were really happy with it. So uh, no looking back for them. And I think it's an easy choice if it's a bright room or a living room and you wanna go with a nice Sony TV. Then before I get to the question of what's my favorite TV for watching a big game and even maybe like tell you bright room, dark room, I wanna go over the best three TVs that we reviewed this year. And I still think this is true. Overall, I really think that the A95L 
was the best TV we had this year. It's pretty much perfect on all different levels. I mean, it really upscales well. It looks amazing. It's super bright. It's a QD OLED, beautiful color. So I don't really have any complaints. And it pairs with all of my Sony, you know, audio stuff. So I was able to connect it to my sound bar and it acts as a center channel. It gives it a little bit more height, elevates the sound stage a little bit. And I really like it for that reason. And then second for me, I absolutely loved the LG G3 OLED because it looks so good on the wall. And this year with the MLA technology and the 77 inch, awesome, absolutely awesome TV. We have this in the game room, probably the best gaming TV in the world. We paired it with a little bit of fancy LEDs on the back of it and it looks even cooler now. So kids love it, super awesome gaming TV. And I'm not saying that either one of these are super practical, but they're really good uh, displays. Uh, I like them a lot. And then lastly, we have the Samsung S95C. Again, very few complaints. Awesome, it has the one connect box, looks really clean. It also can be wall mounted to look very similar to the G3. And then my concern about the upscaling or low bit content again can be addressed. If that's the only thing that's an issue, which it was for me, then we could just connect Apple TV 4K or Nvidia Shield or something like that that can upscale. And you have no issues when you're upscaling things like a sporting event that may be at 1080 or 720 in resolution. Upscale it with a different device, bring it into this TV, looks awesome. All three of these are fantastic. And obviously people could argue, go ahead and argue in the comments what you think is the best TV of the year. But I like the A95L just because it fits into my ecosystem and it's really nice and honestly too bright, amazing. It blinds me at night, but I love it. So now I just wanna tell you guys what I think is the best opportunity for watching the big game, period. And of course you have to have a lot of room because it's absolutely massive. But I thought that this TCL S5 was such an awesome deal. And I would actually put it up on this A tier for its price point versus the quality. I mean, realistically, it's not better than any of these Bs, I guess, um, or it's right there with them. Um, so maybe I'll just put it there in the Bs. But if you're talking about deals, it, this is 20, it says 2,500 on Best Buy's website right now. It is available. I did see it at $2,000 and maybe, you know, by the time this video comes out, it's back at 2,000. But this is a great opportunity. Everyone that I've recommended this TV to has, you know, emailed me back or messaged me on, you know, on the channel and said that they absolutely love it. The same goes with the uh, U8K as well though. So I'm assuming that everyone likes that as well. And that's 3,000, but not really available. And then this, you know, 100 inch, from Hisense, I haven't heard back from anyone that's gotten that, but for, again, 2000, great opportunity. But really this S5 blew me away because it is a 120 hertz panel. It does have 4K 120 gaming ports, and it actually looks good with watching HDR and sports. So if you have the room, there's no question that this 98 inch TCL S5 is great. And you know, in this next year, they're gonna be coming out with different sizes in this too, so they'll have smaller versions of it. But for me, like would I pick this 98 inch S5 over something like an 80 83 inch of a different brand. So that could be a question that people ask. Now, the 83 inch version of the LG C3 right here is still like twice as expensive. So I would say yes for that. But if you're talking about a 77 inch Samsung S89C, a 77 inch versus a 98 inch. Now, obviously the size is definitely worth upgrading. I think that trumps quality in this respect, but if your space is not as big, I mean, it can look pretty silly to put a 98 inch TV up on the wall if you only sit like eight feet away. So 77 is probably big enough and there are a bunch of these 77, 75, even 85 inch TVs look really good. And if you're looking to compare something like, you know, a 98 inch S5 versus an 85 inch QM8, this QM8 is actually 1800 bucks for an 85 inch. And then if you're going to one of these 98s, you're talking about, you know, it's another 700 bucks. If you're talking about the 98 inch X90L from Sony, I mean, that's $8,000. So, you know, you have to make that decision on if you should get something for, you know, size versus price point, because I'm, you know, I'm definitely not paying four times as much to get that Sony over this 85 inch QM8. I think an 85 inch could totally be fine in your house. Most people don't need ridiculous TVs. However, I did have an 83 inch OLED TV. It was the A90J, but it was similarly priced to this LG C3 at four grand, 3,800 bucks. Then I went up to a 98 inch and the 98 inch stayed in the house because it was just so much bigger. I had the R754, which is similar to this QM8 here. And I stayed in the house. Now I actually have 
the AWOL vision with the 150 inch screen. And most people don't have room for a 150 inch screen. Um, and you know, this with the screen is like $10,000. So I'm not saying that's for everybody, but that's what's currently in my house because we have space. And when we watch things, we're just watching a movie or watching games. And if I can split it into four sections when I'm watching the NFL package on YouTube TV, then I have four 75 inch TVs in front of me. Uh, my dad did come over and he said, wow, that's just too big. I can't even see the whole screen and my neck's getting sore looking up. But it is something to consider because I am someone that really likes a good quality picture, but the 83 inch just wasn't big enough sitting 15 feet away. So I went to the LED TV that I knew was just a little bit less in quality, but bigger. And I really enjoyed that. And then when I had an opportunity to put a 150 inch screen up, I said, that's it. It looks amazing. I'm keeping that. So you really have to determine what you think is going to be best for you. So really, I think that this S5 is probably my favorite pick. And that's for the 98 inch only. If I had to go down in size, I'd probably say right now, this S5. 89C from Samsung is probably your best option because it's going to be far brighter than like the B3 here from LG. And it's probably going to be as bright as the LG C3, but less, I think $700 less for the price point. And so I think that's a great opportunity. If you're going to go with just an LED TV, I think it's probably going to be the U8K 75 inch U8K. That's only $1299. So that's even less than the S89C. So if you're going brighter room, you could go with this uh, Hisense and get yourself something for 1300 bucks. If you want a darker room or if you just want to go OLED, definitely consider the S89C. Or if you just want to go top tier and you're just going for it, you're going to buy one TV and that's going to stick. You can get the A95L from Sony, the G3 from LG, or the S95C from Samsung. Or if you just, you know, hit the lotto, you could always go ahead and grab that 97 inch M3, the wireless OLED for 30,000 bucks. You know, that sounds like a great deal, right? No, I'm just kidding. That is probably not practical for most people. I will put this AWOL vision here up in the B tier real quick. That's what I had said before. That's 120 inch. Obviously we have the 150. We do have a couple of projectors up here. The Altamia was pretty good. I probably ranked that just below the AWOL vision. And then we have a couple of these long throw projectors. I think that they're both on the C tier here. Here. They're still pretty good, but I don't know if they're going to be your best use case for living room watching big games. They are 120 hertz, so we'll put them above these TVs, but these TVs are going to be a lot less expensive, so probably a better deal. And then the Samsung Q80C. I'll put this up here on this tier because it is still a really big display. I haven't reviewed it, so I can't comment too much on it, but some people enjoy it and some people be more comfortable getting this than maybe the TCL S5, though I don't know why. I love that S5, as you can probably tell, but there you go, the list that I have. And if you need any more help, go to our website, beintheinstaller.com, and take the TV quiz. It does give you uh, questions that you can run through to figure out what would be best for you, size, all that, you know, brand preference. And at the end, it'll spit out the best TVs for you to do. So definitely check that out. And again, appreciate you guys checking the video out. Smash the like button, all that. Comment below. I'll try to answer all the questions I can. And go Packers in the Super Bowl, right? No, I'm just kidding. They're not even in it. But should be fun. And we'll see you guys in the next video.